Hey guys, how are you all? I hope you are doing well. I am very excited for today's video. If you guys are confused by the background, go ahead and check out Tuesday's video. I explain a little bit about what's going on and how Jared and I are no longer in San Francisco right now. Um, so yeah, go check out that video. But fast forwarding to today because we are talking about a very exciting brand that so many of you have asked me about. I cannot tell you how many messages I've received about this brand. You guys were just as curious as I was about the products, how they perform, price tag, a little bit about the background of the brand, all that good stuff. So we are going to cover that today. If you guys are familiar with my reviews, usually what I do for skincare and what I'm sort of doing for this video because it's going to be a full face. I'll give you a little background about the brand. We'll talk about some price comparisons with this brand because it is particularly expensive and then I'll kind of do like a get ready with me talk through the products and then kind of a wrap up with my final thoughts and what I would recommend purchasing what I think we could maybe find alternatives for all that good stuff jumping in with some background about the brand itself if you guys are not familiar with Gucci Westman she is a very famous makeup artist she does a lot of celebrities makeup uh, a lot of red carpet looks and she's known for this sort of like second skin appearance that she creates so really just enhancing natural features just making Making you look like your best self. If you guys have seen other makeup tutorials or reviews that I've done, that's definitely the look that I gravitate towards. Across the brand, there are no parabens, no PEGs, no talc, no phthalates, no synthetic fragrance, and then no testing on animals. There are a few products that I think have less than 1% silicone, but the foundation doesn't have any. So that's just something to keep in mind. This brand is sort of the intersection of clean meets luxury. So if you didn't already think the price tag of clean beauty was too high, then this brand probably won't come as a shock to you but if you already feel like clean beauty is expensive then this might be uh, a bit of a sticker shock it is a quite pricey brand obviously the aesthetics are really beautiful it's very much comparable to conventional brands such as like Tom Ford Chanel uh, just that like minimal beautiful aesthetic which we will get into but bringing up price I did just want to do a slight price comparison between some of those luxury brands just to give you guys an idea of where this sits so I did a little bit of research like I said I was trying to see where this sits because people have very strong opinions about the price of these products so I was curious kind of how they would compare especially because this brand doesn't hide the fact that they are advertising as a luxury brand so it's Sort of sits with those earlier brands that I mentioned like Tom Ford, YSL, um, Chanel, all of that. So I did a little bit of price comparison. I have my notes on my phone. So just to give you an idea, Chanel foundations range from about $50 to $60 and this one sits at $68. Pat McGrath foundation which is another high-end makeup line by a makeup artist that's $68 so we're at the same price range there um, and then moving kind of into the cleaner luxury brands this brand isn't sold at detox market but they do have a strong like yes and no list in terms of ingredients and that's Chantecaille and their complexion products are about $74 to $78 so that's even more expensive than Westman Atelier. Kier Weiss foundation is $68 there's a lot of talk about Kier Weiss and Westman Atelier sort of being comparable besides the fact that Westman Atelier, their packaging is not refillable, which is unfortunate because it's such beautiful packaging, but I did a little deeper dive and um, you are getting more product in Westman Atelier, so we can talk about that later. I found that for all of these products, the blush price was about the same. So Westman Atelier's blush sits at $50 and everyone out of the brands that I mentioned, it was about $50 to $60. So one product that really stood out in terms of price tag is the mascara, which we will get into. But the Westman Atelier mascara is $62. And the only comparable mascara that I could find was a Chantecaille mascara. And that one is $70. And they also have a, I believe a $30 or $35 one. But the $70 one has some like benefits for your lashes in it. And the Westman Atelier claims to have a benefit for your lashes as well. So maybe that's sort of the skincare ingredients talking, but that is the only comparable mascara I could find on the market that was around the same price. So pricey products, yes. Are they worth it? <laughs> we will get into that. I've been using them now for about a month, I'd say, and kind of testing them out in different ways. So I'm just going to put my hair back and we can actually start applying them. Starting off with the Vital Stick Foundation. Again, this retails for $68. There are 14 shades of this foundation. I have two shades. I have Atelier 1 and Atelier 2. I am definitely closer to Atelier 1. It obviously comes in this really beautiful light pink packaging. The exterior packaging for the foundation is similar across all of the products. So it's in this pink cardboard box with this really 
beautiful silver metallic outline. Um, Westman Atelier is written on it. A little bit of information, obviously, um, everything is easy to find. The one thing that I will say is there are no directions on the box. So there's nothing that tells you exactly how to apply that, which I think is kind of a missed opportunity because it's such a niche brand. I feel like I wish there was a little bit more education also because I think these products perform optimally in certain ways. At least that's what I found and usually it's the easier way. So I think it would be to their benefit to add directions to the box just to tell people like how this is recommended to use but see it says consciously crafted beauty which I think is really nice and then Gucci Westman signature. All of the ingredients are easy to see and then you can see the expiration date by that little cosmetics box and this foundation has an 18 month expiration date which is more than the Kier Weiss foundation. I'm going to be comparing I feel like a lot to the Kier Weiss foundation only because so many people want to compare these two brands together and I think it does provide like a good reference point in terms of price tag what you're paying and Kier Weiss is obviously more accessible in terms of how many retailers it's in so people are kind of curious how the two compare. The actual packaging for the foundation is gorgeous. This might be some of my favorite packaging. It does come with a little slip case which is linen, really beautiful, obviously not necessary but if you're paying $68 for a foundation it's kind of nice to have all of these little luxuries. So I have already prepped my face. They do recommend putting on a moisturizer beforehand. I have a face oil but it's been sitting on my face for probably about 45 minutes at this point so it's pretty much sunk in that's one thing about this foundation that I will say if you use a face oil to really let it sink in because this is a creamy creamy foundation it's a beautiful foundation just creamy so keep that in mind so I'm gonna start with Atelier one and I'm actually gonna be using my fingers with it I'm not gonna be placing it directly onto my skin and this is the way that they recommend you use it I've seen people kind of like draw it all over their face but I think you kind of miss the magic of this foundation when you do that because this blends into your skin like no other foundation. There are some key ingredients in this that help with that for sure. There's squalane oil, there is coconut oil, so if you don't like coconut ingredients then this is definitely not for you. However, my assumption would be this, this is very high quality coconut oil, so you could always patch test it and see if it works for you. This foundation just melts into your skin. There are no silicones in this foundation, though it feels almost like there are because it literally blurs your pores and it fills them in to a degree that I have never seen before. Especially I have larger pores kind of in this area alongside my nose and it looks so good over them. So again, this is Atelier 1. I have Atelier 2 and I'll do kind of a side-by-side -side swatch for you guys to see the two of them. A couple other ingredients that are highlighted on their website are camellia seed oil and then one that I hadn't heard of before which is phytothinkacine which I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. Again all this information is on their website so you guys can check it out. It's an anti-inflammatory ingredient that sort of targets redness and inflammation on your skin and it also helps with fine lines so there's some like anti-aging benefits to that and then the last one that they highlight berry flux vita which is an extract from raspberries which I thought was interesting again it's sort of like a moisturizing youth preserving ingredient so this is definitely a great foundation if you have dry skin I have not noticed it clinging to any dry patches it's super easy to use as you guys can see I'm just doing one half of my face and it's incredibly skin-like. It's really pretty, pretty incredible. It's fuller coverage than Kier Weiss's foundation. It's probably the fullest coverage cream foundation that I have found, but you can use it in so many different ways because of how easy it is to blend into your skin and how it melts into your skin. So like the Kier Weiss foundation, my favorite part of that is how you can just use it in certain areas of your face and it blends in seamlessly so that you don't have to cover your whole face in foundation and this is definitely up that stream. And then that's about half of my face done so you guys can see the two side by side. And I applied such a little amount of product, like such a little amount of product. And I feel like this is really like a noticeable difference between the two halves of my face. You can see I have some darkness usually around this area. This has totally been canceled out on this side. Uh, my under eye, you can see I have a slightly more prominent bag under this eye. And this one I can even take a little bit more and use it as a concealer. I'm really brighten under there. This is definitely a buildable foundation. Now look at this under eye compared to that one. 
pretty impressive. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we'll keep moving through the products. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish up by doing the same thing by placing a little bit underneath my eye as a concealer. But that is both halves of my face done and I feel like I have a pretty full coverage foundation that doesn't look like it on my skin. It's very impressive. As you guys can see, my face is still has some dew to it. Uh, it's definitely not a matte foundation. So if you are a matte foundation lover, it's probably not gonna be for you. However, I wouldn't write it off because it does dry down. So yes, I have some luminosity to my skin, but it's very natural skin-like luminosity and it's not gonna budge. So it's not wiping away when I touch it. It's really, it does set in place. And for a clean beauty foundation, I think that is a little bit unique. Usually I end up having to powder. Uh, if I want something super long wearing, one that is long wearing for me is the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation, but that again has silicone. And this does not have any silicone in it, but it performs as well as the silicone foundation, especially when blurring pores. So usually I would go in and do my eyes, but I'm actually gonna move on to the blush product that I have from them. This is called AB Cheeks. I have it in the shade Petal, which is their best-selling shade. It comes in this beautiful light gray packaging. Again, the magnetic top to it, uh, which feels luxurious. It is smaller than the foundation, but it's also a multi-stick. So you can use this on your cheeks, you can use this on your lips, you can use this on your eyes, which is what I'm planning to do. So a really easy routine, uh, and if you wanted to just try a couple of products from Westman Atelier, it would be the foundation and this, because you kind of have a complete look with that. Now there is a blog post up on their website that you can check out to see what shade might work best for you. Gucci Westman sort of outlines what she thinks works best for people, although they do say that all the shades are universal. If you have a deeper skin tone than me, perhaps the shade Pop It would work better, which is a little bit more vibrant. Vibrant. Um, that is a recommendation by the Westman Atelier team. And if you have tan skin tone or you're wanting kind of a summery look, there's a shade called Cochette. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but it's more of a peachy look. So I do have Petal, like I said, that is the best selling shade as of when that article was written, which I think was in July. But there are five other shades to check out. Uh, and these do retail for $50, which sort of falls within that luxury blush range that we were talking about before. They highlight a blend of oils that's in it that help to soothe and nourish your skin. And then they also advertise that there is a Vitis Vita uh, grape extract, which is detoxifying and promotes collagen and sort of the natural production of hyaluronic acid in your skin. This is not as creamy as the foundation. So when you actually lay it down, it does a good job of staying in place place and I appreciate that because I love cream blushes um, but sometimes they can be a little bit too creamy and especially in warmer weather they tend to kind of slip around your face so this is actually kind of my ideal cream blush texture it is really really blendable easy to use but like I said it does stay in place I'm actually gonna place them on my eyes we're gonna do kind of a monochrome look today and again I'm just using my fingers to apply this I only found one product that I really need a brush for in order to use it optimally. Otherwise, I actually think fingers kind of work best with these products. You know, I'm looking a little bit pale. It's because outside it keeps debating whether it wants to be sunny or cloudy. It's actually a little bit more matte than the foundation. And like I said, it's a little stiffer of a formula, not so creamy, um, but that works to its benefit because it's a little bit easier to apply and really get it in the areas that you want it. For me, this is a long wearing product as well. I guess I should just say a blanket statement. All of these products have been very long wearing on me. Now, obviously there's difference in people's skin. Uh, I sort of have combination oily, a little bit dry uh, skin, if that makes any sense, definitely dehydrated skin. So these nourishing products are great for me, but I don't want anything that's gonna slip around my face because I do get oil production in like my T-zone area. So I've been really impressed by how well these have lasted throughout the day. I'm actually gonna move on now to finish up my eyes and use the mascara. So this is probably uh, one of the most talked about products. So it does come in its own little linen case. It has this beautiful gold exterior. Obviously the packaging is extremely aesthetically pleasing. This is called the I Love You Mascara. This is in clean black. They only have one color at the moment. It is $62, so the most expensive mascara I have ever personally tried. There are a few highlighted ingredients on the website that you guys can go check out. What I actually found the most interesting was that the expiration date on this was six months and not three months like most of the other mascara products that I've tried. So I just thought that was interesting and something to note. The brush itself is pretty big, but it doesn't give you clumpy lashes. So I'm gonna put it on on one of my lashes and show you guys the difference. I did curl my lashes 
a couple hours ago, so they might have fallen a little bit, but maybe I should zoom you guys in. The recommendation on this is, of course, holding it horizontally, wiggling it, like starting at the root, brushing it up, and then if you want to do your bottom lashes, to use it vertically across. So let me show you guys the difference between my two eyes, and then we'll talk a little bit about this. So obviously, this is the eye with no mascara. This is the eye with mascara. So you can see there's a bit of a difference here. While I put this on the other eye, let's talk about this mascara because $62 is a hefty price tag to pay. So does it actually work? Uh, the answer is yes and no. This mascara is probably the first mascara that has been the ideal texture for me to use right out of the tube the first time that I'm using it. So what I mean by that is often I find that when you're first opening a mascara, it's extremely wet and hard to work with. And then as you use it more, it starts to dry out a little bit, and then you get the texture that you want. This mascara is the opposite of that. It comes out straight out of the bag, kind of the perfect texture. So that's one thing going in its favor. Uh, it can get a little bit clumpy if you build it up too much. Like, I sort of feel like I built up this one a little bit too much right now. It's not how I'd wear it on an everyday basis. But otherwise, it just gives you a really beautiful lash lengthening, and then as you build it, a little bit more volume. So you can get some versatility through this. When I first put this through my lashes, I would say it was higher performing than most of the other mascaras that I found. But I do think that there are some things that affect this. Uh, when I've used a face oil and I've taken my face oil all the way underneath my eye and sort of dabbed it in, I have noticed that at the end of the day there is a little bit of transfer here, which, you know, I can't fault this mascara for because that's sort of every mascara can deteriorate with the oil that's underneath kind of your eye because you're constantly blinking and kind of bringing that up and it's rubbing it off. Uh, this is not a waterproof mascara, so it doesn't claim to be, but that's just a disclaimer. I should put that out there. This is a product I feel super conflicted about because I actually really love how my lashes look, but I think the price tag is like very, very expensive. And personally for me, I could not afford to have this in my routine all the time. So this is sort of like, a, I feel conflicted telling you guys that this is a great product, but it is a good mascara. Again, mascara is extremely personal. So this is kind of a gamble product. You could try it and you could say this is not for me, but that's just something to keep in mind. So potentially because mascara is so personal, unless you're sure that you really, really want to spend that money, there are definitely other mascaras that I can recommend to you guys that I find work too that you guys can check out. So I do have one final product to share with you guys. I put a little bit of the baby cheeks on my lips really quick, just so that I wouldn't forget as I'm finishing. But this is the last product that they have uh, to try from Westman Atelier. And I have to say, this is probably the most unique product that I've tried in a long time. I just haven't found anything that I think is similar and that is the super loaded tinted highlight in Pot de Now this does come in two different colors. This is the most expensive product that I'm trying from them. This is $75. Some of you might call it a highlighter. I would maybe call it an illuminator and that's where I think there needs to be maybe a little bit more education around this product because I've seen it used on YouTube in different ways, a lot of people using their fingers, and I just don't think you get the impact of this product if you use your fingers on your cheeks. Now, if you wanna put a little bit on your eye, by all means, use your fingers, but I think a brush is necessary to get the sort of like luminosity that this product has to offer. I will say that this color, it's translating maybe a little bit more on camera like it looks like on the website, but I would have never guessed that this was the color they sent me based on what it looks like in person. Online, it looks kind of like a like a super pale pink color, but in reality, it's pretty dark. I actually thought it was gonna be too dark for my skin. Um, I, I thought that it wouldn't work. And that's when I had swatched on the back of my hand with fingers, but I have found with a brush that it is actually perfect and beautiful and a really wonderful product. The texture is extremely unique. It almost feels like a cream when you're sort of pressing into it, but then if you swipe your finger around in it, it's more like a powder, so it's very interesting. I think the imagery on the website doesn't exactly highlight it the way that I think it should, only because the images that they put next to this product are really emphasizing this like beautiful stripe of highlight on someone's cheek. It's not that extreme highlight. That is a different product altogether. That one I believe is the lit up highlighting stick. So that's just something that I feel like makes it a little bit confusing. Like I said, there are two colors. I have Peau de Peche. There is also Peau de Soleil. Um, Peau de Soleil is more of like a warm bronzy. This one is, according to the website, a soft pearlized bronze suede, I believe. Again, some highlighted ingredients on the website. We have caper extract, which is supposed to be soothing for the skin. We have hyaluronic spears, which is supposed to be kind of plumping. 
including jojoba oil, an antioxidant, also moisturizes the skin, and helps with protection from UV rays and other pollutants. I'm going to swatch this for you guys and show you what it looks like when you swatch. This is why swatches aren't always the best tell of a good product because Personally, I was not impressed with this when I first swatched it. I was only impressed with it when I used it with the brush. So here's a swatch for you guys to see. As you can see, it's sort of like a, a dense, dusty, uh, almost tan color on my skin. And now I'm gonna take a really thick, this is called a buffer brush. This is from Zoeva, this is 104. Now Gucci Westman does recommend a Kabuki brush, which she makes, but I felt like this brush was a pretty similar shape um, and her brushes are very expensive. So <laughs> that's just something to keep in mind. But it is a densely packed, sort of wide uh, angled brush. And I'm gonna dip this in. It almost feels like you're not even getting any product on here. But starting at kind of the apple of my cheek, I'm gonna swipe it and bring it all the way up. Can you guys see how beautiful that is? It adds a glow to your skin. I'm gonna take some across my nose. A glow to your skin. I almost feel like, I don't know, it's, it's really unique. It's hard to describe. It just lays so nicely over all of these products. Can you see how beautiful that is? It's very, very natural, but it does something and it provides a little warmth. So I sort of have been using this in replace of a bronzer. I have kind of this beautiful shine to it. It's just so gorgeous and it's so unique. You guys know me, I'm, I'm really skeptical of highlighters because I don't like the way they look when they don't look natural. And this looks extremely natural. This looks like you just got back from like a holiday and you're just like glowing. You're having the best skin day ever, maybe a little bit of a tan. Wow, I just was super impressed with this product and I just think it's cool. It's really, to me, it feels like like real innovation. I haven't seen this before, really unique and it gets me excited. Oh, I should mention this one comes in like a little, I don't know if it, I'm assuming it's faux leather, maybe it's real leather, but it comes in like a little case that you can put it in. Gosh, did I talk your ear off? Maybe, maybe you guys are already asleep and you don't wanna hear anymore. But I thought I would just give a few wrap up thoughts. So I hope this was really helpful just to see the products in action, how I feel like you can use them, how I feel like they're optimally used. I have been testing these out for about a month now, so I feel like I have a pretty good handle on what works for me with them. When I talk about more expensive skincare, I always sort of highlight what products I would highly recommend and then what products I think you know we can find alternatives for. Obviously my overwhelming feeling is that like yes these products are beautiful, they're gorgeous, they're just expensive. So I'm thinking about like me as a consumer and what I could actually afford or what I would be willing to put my money towards and I would say that's definitely the foundation because it's extremely unique, silicone free, and just the way that it lays is so beautiful. This is probably gonna be my new go-to foundation for quite some time now. And because of how unique the product is, I would actually spend the $75 on this super loaded tinted highlight. It's just a really unique product. Again, I wish I could explain it. If any of you have this and you can explain it in a more articulate way, let me know down in the comments. Uh, obviously, you know, this is a line developed by a makeup artist who is extremely skilled. Uh, she knows her formula, she knows what works, she knows what doesn't. So I haven't found any faults in the products that I've been using. It's just a matter of like what I could actually afford and what uh, I'd have to say like is beautiful, but probably not practical for me to buy all the time. And I have other cheaper alternatives that I like. Again, I will say I do wish these were refillable. I know everyone's saying that, but it's only because the packaging is so, so, so gorgeous and perhaps they could cut down on the price a little bit too, but when compared to Keir Weiss, I know I touched on this before, you do get almost double, if not double, the product in Westman Atelier products versus Keir Weiss products. So in a way, you know, yes, you're paying for a more expensive product, but you're also getting more products. So it's just something to keep in mind. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this now that I've sort of shared all of this with you. If you have any additional questions, please just let me know down in the comments and I will answer it as soon as I possibly can. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that this answered a lot of your questions already and I'm really excited to hear your feedback. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.